Welcome to the basic setup guide for your Foscam FI9821W wireless IP camera from Foscam. Uh, while this tutorial goes over the FI9821W, it can also be used for the FI9802W, as well as the FI9818W and other HD models uh, to come from Foscam in the future. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is going over the basic setup for uh, the new camera. It's a little bit different because the interface has changed. Uh, with the newer HD models. I'm going to be going over uh, the setup on a Mac computer. I'm currently on Mountain Lion, which is the latest OS X for Mac. And you'll see that my version here is 10.8.3. So at this time, this is the latest version for Mac computers. So let's go ahead and get uh, straight into it. I do want to mention that I have IP camera tools installed already on my Mac. If you don't have it installed, you can find it on the CD that came with the package, or you can go to our website here at foscam.us slash tools dash support.html, and you can download it uh, right here. It says for Mac, MJPEG, and new H.264 cameras. And if you click this link right here, it'll download to your downloads folder, and you'll be able to open it up. So what we're going to do is I have it already downloaded, so I'm going to click on my downloads folder here and it should download to your downloads folder if you have that set by default and it says IP camera tool and all I'm gonna do is click this and it's gonna open up and you'll see the IP camera tool box opens up like this and you can see this one camera here called anonymous um, it's giving an IP address and a port number so we want to make sure that we are on the same network that our camera is on and your camera should be connected to the power and it should also be connected by an ethernet cord from the camera to your router directly. Don't plug in the ethernet cord to your PC. It needs to be plugged into your router. And now we want to make sure that the computer that we're on currently is on the same network that the camera is connected to, that same router. So in this case, uh, my camera is connected to Foscam's Wi-Fi network, which is the router that I'm using for this tutorial. And that's why I can see the camera right here. So you pulled up IP camera tool, you can see the camera right here. And now what we want to do is just to make sure that everything is correct. Sometimes you may not see this initially, you might see an error message such as subnet doesn't match, um, you know, double click to change or uh, something similar. If you're getting that problem, what you want to do is uh, go ahead and right click here or double click on your trackpad. Uh, with two fingers to open up the uh, submenu and you can click on network configuration and you want to do this you know even if you're not getting an error message like I did if you're getting an IP address and a port you just want to make sure everything is set up correctly uh, the first time so that you don't have to go back and do this again but what we'll do is uh, go to network configuration right here and you'll see it pulls up um, all of this information which is mostly network information um, and the camera will be assigned this uh, when you connect it uh, initially to your router so you can see that it has an IP address here uh, a subnet mask gateway and DNS server are actually at zero so we're, we're actually going to want to change that because um, it's actually quite important um, if we are leaving this at zero we don't want to run into any problems down the road so what we want to do here is um, we need to get this information from our network and the way we do that in Mac is we can either do it from here at the top on the taskbar if we click on the wireless symbol here and we go down to open network preferences and if we do that it, it opens up uh, the network preferences box in Mac and so what we can do is pull this window over here bring this to the foreground and from here what we want to do is we see that we're connected through Wi-Fi you might be connected through Ethernet um, if you are connected through Ethernet you would just go here um, and click advanced and what we're gonna do is click advanced on the Wi-Fi um, section since we're connected by Wi-Fi so you click advanced and you want to go to TCP IP over here at the top and right here it's showing us that this is our IP address for our computer and you'll see it's basically the, almost the same as the IP address for the camera it's 10.0.1.3 uh, 
uh, for me. Yours is going to be different, obviously, because you're on a different computer, a different router. Um, but I'm basically showing you the concepts here. So the IP address here on the network configuration is for your camera. This is not for your computer. So you need to make sure that this IP address is separate from any other device on your network. Um, any device that you connect to your network, whether it's a phone, whether it's a computer or a Mac or um, whatever it is, maybe you have a smart TV or something like that, everything has its own IP address. It's assigned an IP address by your router. Um, and what that does is it basically identifies that device on your uh, network as a separate device. So the camera is going to have its own separate IP address because it's it's running it's its own device on your network basically. So we see that the camera has an IP address of 10.0.1.2 here and that should be fine. I don't have any other devices connected to this network. Um, the subnet mask is the same so you'll see 255.255.255.0 and the router address is 10.0.1.1 and this is actually the same address as the gateway. The gateway and the router are basically the same thing and you'll see over here that that's not the case so what we want to do is fill in this information um, using what we have here. So let's put that in. So it's going to be 10.0.1.1 and your DNS server usually is going to be the same as your gateway um, and how you can find that out is if you go to DNS over here at the top you can see that DNS servers is basically the same as the gateway 10.0.1.1 your router might have different DNS addresses um, so you want to just double check and make sure if that's the case and it should show up here um, but usually you can put in your gateway address uh, as the same as your DNS server so let's go ahead and do that 10.0.1.1 and that's great. Uh, looks like we have everything set up properly. And the HTTP port uh, is on by default on the newer cameras is 88. On the older cameras it used to be 80. Um, that actually caused some router conflicts because your router uh, is usually also at port 80. So sometimes if you know people didn't change their port on their router then uh, or not on the router excuse me on their camera then they wouldn't be able to connect to their camera because the router is on the same port. So the port basically works similar to uh, an IP address um, when using outside networks. Uh, the port basically distinguishes each device um, on its own. So every port needs to be assigned separately to every device, uh, just like your IP addresses here that I explained previously. So on by default, the newer cameras, they default to port 88, so you don't have to really change this unless you want to we do recommend that you change it to something in the four digits you know something like eight nine eight six or whatever it is um, and you'll be using that later on to port forward your camera uh, in your router which we'll go over in the uh, one of the next videos and you'll see by here the default username is admin and the password is left blank there's no password here um, and you need to put in in the future, if you change your password here and you want to change network configuration, um, by any chance if you want to change the IP address and you, some, you know you change the password to this to something else, um, when you push OK, you're going to need to put in the correct password in order to uh, authorize that you want to change these things. But since the password is default, we're going to leave that blank. So everything looks to be set up properly. We're going to push OK, and the camera is actually going to reboot at this time. Um, when you push OK because I changed uh, those settings and you'll see it disappeared right there and I can actually exit out of this. We'll push cancel, we're not changing anything here. Um, because I changed the gateway and the DNS server on the camera it actually has to upload that information back to the camera so when I did that um, and I pushed OK that information is basically being sent to the camera and the camera has to reboot uh, with those new settings. So once it does that, it's going to pop up again. Um, it actually just rebooted for me. Um, it's going to do its little, you know, dance spinning thing, pan and tilting, uh, and it'll come back up. And there you go, uh, it came back up again. So what we can do is just double check this again. Uh, right click on it, network configuration, and you'll see that those values that I had initially, and I just when I put them in and I pushed OK, they're coming up here now by default, which is great. So now what we want to do is open up the camera in our browser 
And how we're going to do this is we double click on here. And Safari should be your default browser. If it's not, you want to open up the camera in Safari because on Mac it's only going to be compatible with Safari. If you try to open up with uh, Internet, uh, not, I'm sorry, if you try to open it up with Firefox or Chrome um, and you try to install a plugin, it's not actually going to work. Uh, so you're going to want to use it in Safari only. It's compatible in Safari. Uh, all the features are there. Uh, Two-way audio recording, all of that is there for the newer cameras. So you don't have to worry about that. But like I said before, everything is only compatible in Safari currently. So when we double click here, it's going to open up in my Safari browser. And you can see up here the IP address that I had and a colon and then the port number, which is 88. And you'll see that the interface is different from our older MJPEG cameras. And these newer cameras actually require a plugin to operate uh, on a browser fully. So what we need to do is over here it says uh, plugins are not found. Click me to download. We're going to click this and download the plugin. And when we download the plugin, it shows up here in our downloads folder as plugins.pkg, uh, which is package. And what we need to do is just install this. So we're going to click here and it's going to ask us to install the plugin. Welcome to the plugins installer and we want to install this. Sometimes it actually might give you an error message saying that you need to change your security settings to install the plugin from an unidentified developer. Um, sometimes that might be an issue. So to fix that what you want to do is go to your Apple settings. I believe it's in system preferences. If you go to uh, security and privacy over here, it's going to load up security and privacy for me. And when you get to the security and privacy page, uh, there's actually a option that's going to ask you to, um, you'll have to actually unlock it and it's going to ask you to um, open up the uh, installation to outside uh, developers and un unidentified developers. So here you can see it opened up for me. And right here, this option down here, it says allow applications downloaded from. And by default, I believe it's Mac App Store and identified developers. So if you want to change this, and you'll need to change it to anywhere, you're going to click on the lock to make changes. And you have to authenticate. So put in your password, and you can change it right here. So by default, it was here, and you'll change it to anywhere. And it's going to ask you to, or it'll prompt you to confirm. So I'm going to say allow from anywhere, and then I'll click the lock to prevent further changes, and then that's it. So we'll exit out of that, and you should be able to install a plugin now, so you can go back and click on the plugins uh, file, and it'll be able to pop up like this. So from here, we'll click on continue, and it's going to tell us it's going to take 2.2 megabytes of space, which shouldn't be a problem. We'll click install. It's going to ask me to authenticate again. So put in your password and install. And the installation was successful. That's great. So we're going to close that. And now what we need to do is actually we need to force close Safari and open it up again. Because if we try to refresh, you'll see that this highlighted plugins are not found link is still here. And this actually disappears when you have the plugin installed correctly. So what you want to do is right click on Safari and quit right here on your dock. And that force closes Safari. And now what we want to do is open it up again by double clicking here or opening it up in Safari by putting in the IP address and then a colon and then the port. And you'll see that the link actually disappeared now, which is great. So what we want to do is log in now. So the username is admin by default. The password is blank. Media port, we're going to get into that a little later in port forwarding. Uh, media port is basically a separate uh, video protocol that has been installed into the, the newer cameras that allow it to be used with third-party browsers like Chrome and Firefox and Safari. And this actually allows you to do the recording and uh, two-way audio and everything like that and view video on, um, on these different browsers separate from Internet Explorer on PCs. So what we're going to do is click login. Um, we can just click login. We don't have to put in a password because by default it's blank. And we're logged in, and you can see the live video here um, in the little room I'm in doing the 
video and you can pan tilt here you can use the different controls um, you'll see that there's cruising so you can cruise vertically horizontally by selecting a track and then pushing play this is to stop it you can have presets you can add your own presets you can see I added some hello there and whoa so if you click a preset and you click this button here to go it'll go to the preset point higher LED lights you can put it on auto or just manually you can turn them on and off over here and also the color adjustments uh, which is something new that you can do from the live video page you can change the coloring of the image according to your needs if you like really green things then I suggest uh, putting this slider all the way up you can change brightness uh, contrast this I believe is saturation and you can hover over these and I believe it'll tell you what they are so this is saturation and the last one here is sharpness so if you have maybe a kind of blurry image and you want to make it more sharp you can make it sharper for example and you can also set everything back to default and maybe if I was experiencing some blurriness I want to make it more sharper I can make the image sharper and also if you have trouble you know with a little fuzziness be sure to try and uh, rotate the lens um, on the front of your camera by just twisting it um, and looking at the live video screen to see if it's changing anything um, if it's making it a little more uh, focused depending on uh, how far away you're trying to view your uh, image and you'll see that there is different streams you can mirror and flip the image um, the mode and also in Safari now you can actually view multiple cameras which is great and you'll set these up in the multi-device settings a little later and so that basically completes the basic setup guide down here you can see different uh, buttons for audio microphone speaker this is to take a snapshot recording and then just full screen um, but like I said that completes the video for basic setup so let's go ahead and go to the next uh, video tutorial which is going to be going over wireless settings we want to set up wireless on your camera to connect to it wirelessly so you don't have to use that pesky ethernet cord uh, going to your router from the camera and you'll be starting off uh, on this page so be sure to be here in your settings page under network the network section and clicking on wireless settings and we'll go from here uh, in the next video so I'll see you there